Hello again, Kendopolis. I am Dr. Kendo, and welcome to another Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor Commentaries. This is a series where I create your favorite characters in the Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor. If it's movies, gaming, memes, TV show kind of characters, some of my subscribers or returning viewership are aware of this, but occasionally we will do an episode like today's episode, which is for Kendo Craft. Basically, fusing the worlds of Dr. Kendo commentaries with Minecraft for today, but we've done Kendo crossover episodes in the past for other franchises like Five Nights at Kendo's, Kendo Tale, Kendo Universe, Kendo in the Ink Machine, and the list goes on. So we've started out with a Titan as the source object. I went with the male Titan for our first character in this episode, which will be inspired by Steve and is a fusion of myself and Steve. Call that what you want. Notice that we've got a rectangle here kind of covering up the main torso of that Titan. We got the letter I at the bottom. That's actually going to connect where the pants are for Steve. This shape right here from the Geometry Library can also be accessed just by typing in rectangular prism. So of course, if you're in Scribble Knots Unlimited, you can grab a lot of these geometric shapes, and by a lot, I mean all of them, from the geometry library. Again, it's just a section where you can grab shapes and things without even having to type them. In Scribble Knots Unmasked, though, you are going to need to type out the names. We just typed in an emo, though, and we're gonna grab the back leg of the emo, and I only want this for the shoe right there. The shoe kind of has this look that almost looks like, uh, well, when I paint it like this, like a Converse shoe, you know, the Converse All-Stars, and uh, that's something about these Kendo crossover episodes if you are new to them. While I create myself, you know, I also create other members of my family and things, but uh, we do have a cube right now for the head as well as the shoulders, by the way. Um, I always create my characters, though, that are supposed to be like me. Uh, they, they basically have red shoes because I used to always wear red Converse. I used to wear the red All-Stars Chucks, and uh, gosh, I was like all throughout high school and college, and uh, so anyway, we, we've got those down there right now. So yes, that's not supposed to mean that I think Steve wears red shoes or something. This is Kendo Craft. It's not Minecraft. We are creating Minecraft inspired characters though for Kendo Craft and they're just fused with me and my family. And so the direction that I actually decided to take this, some of you are going to disagree and some of you will love it and agree with what I'm doing. I'm accepting that. Uh, here's Micah, the head for Micah because that's the head that I actually use for my character. Well, again, the direction that I'm taking with this is uh, we're actually going to make it look like in essence these uh, real people like like myself and my wife and then uh, my future baby. We're gonna have baby Kendo, of course. It's gonna look like we're all wearing costumes of Minecraft characters. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna see kind of those Minecraft heads and bodies and whatnot, but our heads are gonna be in the midst of that. And for instance, like my shoes and stuff down at the bottom. So this is like if the real me put on a costume of Steve, basically, and was able to wear it all around me. So I know that other Kendo crossover episodes have not been the same, you know, we, we We've done like Five Nights at Kendo's where there was like a Phantom Kendo and a Nightmare Kendo and those were not just like costumes or anything. It was like if I was actually planted in those worlds. This is the direction that I went with for Kendo Craft here and the reason is, well, it's numerous. I thought it would just kind of be an interesting thing to do for these Kendo crossover episodes. Again, I know that some of you guys aren't going to agree with this. I can only just say I'm sorry. I'm happy with how it's going to turn out, trust me. But I also thought about like, okay, I could make Minecraft characters, you know, like Steve and then just put like my eye color and my shoe color and it would look just way too much just like Steve you know so I, I didn't think that there would be enough difference in that it would just look very much like the characters that we are inspiring our creations uh, from so for instance Steve for me we're also gonna have Alex be for Mrs. Kendo you know so I just thought that those again would look way too similar to the original characters and not be distinct enough we reached the stamp limit of course uh, that's one of the features of this game is that you do have a limitation to how many stamps you can put down. So that's the limit right there. We're going to go into the properties editor in a second, which is where you can edit health and other components for your creation. And it's where I normally read background information and fun facts about the stuff that we create in this series. But for Kendo crossover episodes, there's not really much background info to speak of, I would say, although I can often say a few words. And today's few words may or may not be citing something negative, although I really do feel that it should be said. These Kendo crossovers are loved by my subscribers. Outside viewers to them can be sometimes downright nasty about them. It, well, th I should back up a tiny bit and say that sometimes even my own community of subs can be uh, nasty too, but that's much less common. But look, the point of these is just for something fun. These characters are not supposed to look just like the characters they're inspired by, for one thing. But then, on the other hand, if you take too much away from the original character inspiration, then the result would be something just way too drastically different. And it wouldn't even feel like an inspiration 
inspiration of the character. So that's one statement I feel needs to be noted. But also, I even remember receiving a comment from someone saying, why do you love yourself so much? And continued to put me down past that, implying that a Kindle crossover episode is somehow equated with me thinking, I'm amazing and loving myself. The comment is pretty ignorant, as those of you who know me will actually know that I actually have an extremely low opinion of myself. I don't think I've ever been able to say the words, I love myself, and mean that or internalize it. I actually have been to counseling before because of a core limiting belief that always sticks with me, which is, I'm not good enough. That's always in my head. Want to start a YouTube channel? I'm not good enough. Do a charity donation in honor of the channel community? I'm not good enough. Everything. Seriously. And it's everything that I've had success in, so that just goes to show you about this problem that I have. I get 180,000 subscribers with no help, no shoutouts. I still have this thing saying, I'm not good enough. So no, that comment is foolish. But anyway, it also ignores the most important fact, which is that you guys ask for them. We only do one of these a month, if even, and they generally perform better, actually, than most of my other videos, which means that you guys are viewing them more than quote-unquote normal creation episodes. I just, again, I don't want to bum people out. I just, I felt that this all needed to be said and everything, so if you hate them, it's okay. Just move on. You know, we're, we're going to be resuming the normal creations after this episode, so it's all good. We uh, are going to, we have a ghost hunter, basically. The ghost hunter female was the source object right now, and it's going to be for Alex version of Mrs. Kendo, basically. So my wife, of course, Mrs. Kendo, we've been together for a long time now. Our anniversary is coming up on September 1st. That's very, very soon. And it was actually just my birthday on August 22nd. So my birthday, then our anniversary, and then Mrs. Kendo's birthday is on September 3rd. So it's kind of like August 22nd, September 1st, September 3rd. These are, it's a, it's a string of great days. Wonderful things to celebrate. Uh, we're typing in a parallelogram. That's also what we use for the Steve, the Kendo Steve, basically, uh, for the hair. It's kind of a good thing to use for the hair because it's slanted and uh, it's parallel like that uh, for, it, it basically can fit on the cube heads in that way as you're seeing me kind of place it right there. The letter I was for the hair up top, which we also did for the Steve Kendo. Otherwise, Emily Halpin is kind of the uh, Mrs. Kendo, whereas Micah was mine. You know, Mrs. Kendo, her head, I take from Emily Halpin. Both of those are Fifth Cell developers, Fifth Cell members. And so we took the legs of Emily Halpin as well um, to go underneath the Alex legs for Mrs. Kendo. She's often wearing flats or something like that, so I just thought the Emily Halpin, it looked good. And the fingernails are for the white of the eyes, which we also did for the Kendo character. Um, you know, Dr. Kendo, I would say, actually, the avatar here in Scribblenauts Unlimited. I have gone through many design changes of it, I guess, or a few design changes, and so at this point, now we have kind of this almost anime-style uh, eyes, I would say. You know, they're, they're shaped like those fingernails and stuff. Moss is gonna kind of end this all off with some hair right here, although we're, we are gonna actually include the necklace and stuff, because uh, I think that that's pretty cool how Alex has that pixely necklace right here. And so again, this is like, you know, if Mrs. Kendo was wearing an Alex costume or whatever, she would still have her hair color, but the costume itself has the orange hair. Anyway, Mrs. Kendo and I also have two dogs, and so I always uh, try to include them. This was, uh, let's see, I guess this was a choice that I first made in the Kendo universe creations, if I'm remembering right, which is like Steven Universe and Kendo. But all right, we're gonna go with Apple right here, and of course, Apple is actually not a golden retriever, but it's a good source object to start off with in Scribble Knots Unlimited. Kind of has this Apple build to it. And so th there was many, uh, if you guys recall, basically, I asked you, the subscribers, my beloved community, I asked you for votes. You know, I said, we're gonna make Kendo Craft as the next Kendo crossover. Please vote on which characters you think each of us should be. And so, you know, I gave a list. There's me, Mrs. Kendo, Tui, Apple, my baby. And you guys voted, you know, saying Apple should be this, Tui should be that, you know. And so there were many, many votes, but by far, I think the most votes for at least one of my dogs had to be a wolf in Minecraft, or in essence, the Minecraft dogs, but uh, the wolf. And so again, it's like going along, if I if I was to put my dog in a costume or something, I think he would hate to wear this, a big box costume like that. But we're gonna even give him little ears of the wolf. So it's like the dog has a headband on with the ears attached to it. But you can see we just used rectangular prisms and stuff for the body and the legs, the start of the legs, but it's like his real dog legs are kind of peeking out underneath that. And the letter I was for the collar and a tooth fairy female back arm. That was for that headband piece, which we just did squares on for the ears. Uh, hopefully you guys actually noticed there's like a shoulder of a snow crab. You know, if you type in snow crab, you can grab kind of where the pincer is, but don't grab the pincher itself. Just grab uh, up at the top, like kind of, I guess the best way to explain it is the shoulder, but kind of where it connects to the body. That was actually for the eye 
of Apple right here, and we are going to do that for TUI as well. Now, this is one thing just to show you is in the properties editor, you could give them Minecraft statistics, you know, try to follow the uh, how much HP, how much damage each one does. Scribblenauts Unlimited to me, though, and all of my characters, they're all in a different kind of universe than Minecraft, so I am doing the damage and everything differently, so do not take that as gospel. All right, and so Baby Kendo, it was a toss-up. I did only see one person that was saying a uh, Baby Kendo Creeper would be interesting, and I've always had kind of a love-hate relationship with the Creeper from Minecraft. You guys may recall, if you've been around for almost since the beginning of my channel's Scribblenaut series, uh, you'll remember I created a Creeper uh, before I knew anything about Minecraft. Much less research went on back in those days, and so my Creeper actually did not explode, and it just became a channel joke meme almost around here. But uh, certainly by far, I guess, other than the, the one vote for the Creeper, it was mostly votes for a zombie. So we actually made Baby Kendo also wear the cube head and stuff, whereas that Creeper Baby Kendo last time, you know, it's like you could create it without the cube if you want his little baby cap you know, the, the, the cap that he's got up on the top of his head to kind of substitute for that. And we gave it a little creeper face on it. And then it's like he's wearing little square gloves and stuff just to make like a, as if the Minecraft arms were there. And the zombie onesie, you know, so it's like he's wearing a onesie and uh, has a blue diaper. So it fits that zombie color scheme. But yeah, baby Kendo. So my baby is due October 9th. We are getting very close to that as well. Yes, I still intend to do the channel as always, you know, just kind of keep it going as it always has been, but things definitely will change when the baby comes. I, I don't know exactly how, but they, they certainly will. You know, I may have to do less videos or just retool this series to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to be tired. I'm going to be making mistakes. You know, I'm going to be working on like two hours of sleep for the entire week, probably. <laughs> uh, we got Tui as an ocelot. I know a lot of people also put ocelot in the comments, whether it was for Tui or not, you know, and so I knew that people wanted to see an ocelot kind of inspired character here. So we did start off with the dachshund as the source object. I think you guys just saw how to spell it right there. But the dachshund is sort of good for Tui because he does kind of have this like semi-long body. It's not extremely long, I guess. But he's got kind of a long and thin body. And then he has sort of, uh, in Scribble Knots, we give him the Chihuahua head. That's just when his ears are sort of perked up in real life. Normally his ears actually go kind of down like Apple. But my wife and I love this Scribble Knots version when we create him with the ears kind of perking up like that. And he does do that sometimes in life. Other than that, that, you know, we've got the uh, rectangular prism again for the body, but square for the legs right there that go just above those dachshund feet. So it's like his feet are kind of poking out. Again, my dogs would hate wearing this in real life if they had like a costume that was just a big cube. It would like inhibit a lot of their movements and stuff. So I would say don't dress your dogs up like this. <laughs> if, if it exists, I don't know if it exists. Minecraft dog costumes. We, we should we should look that up for sure <laughs> just to see if it exists. But anyway, uh, we got the Snow Crab again for the eyes right there of Tui, the little color, the brown eyes, and a wart as the shine in the eyes. But here is everybody in the Kendo family right now, or, well, the baby's gonna be born later, of course, so I guess you can't say right right now. But we always include baby Kendo now in these Kendo crossover episodes, and there we all are, so let's uh, put ourselves, let's uh, test out some of the scripting. Of course, the Alex and uh, Steve versions of us Kendos, they are using tools, you know, we basically have it so that they will, and under behavior in the object editor, properties editor, I should say, um, they will use hand tools. And so that's kind of like Minecraft to mine materials and things like that. And so we'll take those pickaxes out of their hands right here, but we can also put them to the test in combat. So here's a kind of an updated creeper, just really fast. It, it wasn't, uh, I, I would say, you know, if I really wanted to create a new creeper design, we could probably make one that's even more improved than this. But this is definitely different from that original creeper from 2013 or whatever. I created that original one. But look at this. It, uh, we've made it hostile, and after just a little while, it does explode, unfortunately taking down the dogs. The Ken dogs, no! But of course, in Scribble Knots, it's as easy as just typing in their names with our magic notebook here. And there is the apple that is the Minecraft wolf. And let's go with the Tui Ocelot and put him back down on the field. I do hope that you guys enjoy these designs. And again, uh, I'm willing to accept that people aren't going to approve of it being like they're wearing costumes or whatever. But I have created a lot of Minecraft characters in the past, at least enough to give you the base design for if you wanted to create them in a different way. Like if you wanted to create them exactly Minecrafty and not costumey, then you would be able to with some of my 
my design choices of the past. Like if you watch my Minecraft story mode episode, for example, I also created Steve long ago, episode five. It was definitely a very different design than I would go with now. Very, very different. But that's Kendo Craft, and I had a lot of fun trying to visualize what these characters should look like. So certainly if you loved it, let me know in the comments. But also, remember to request whatever you want to see. We're going back to your requests now. And most popular, most requested objects get created each week. And with that, I will catch you guys on the next vid. And thanks for viewing. And sit down the road up twists and turns. Always anxious to see what's within. We can look ahead to the point of no return. To the rest of our lives as a spectacle we give. Down the road.